As a lecturer on the subconscious aspects of business, Anthony Gailey has regularly appeared before major industrial manufacturing and business associations, medical groups, major corporations throughout the United States. His clients include Prudential Insurance, FedEx, Walmart, Sprint, State Farm, and the National Associations of Home Builders, and that's just to name a few of them. His program is geared to defy logic because that is what stands in most people's way. It deals with how the subconscious, with the subconscious and how to use it and how to develop positive outlooks, how to train it to improve your concentration and how to get it to achieve the results. Obviously, I can use this today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big ASNET welcome to Anthony Gailey. Thank you. Try that again. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure to be here, and congratulations on having such a great convention. I've been speaking to a few of you, and apparently it's been extremely successful. You're all pumped up, excited, and motivated, correct? You've had some good breakout sessions. You've interacted with a number of users. You've learned a lot of good information that you're going to race home and implement starting Monday morning, right? I have a question. Honestly, how long do you folks think the enthusiasm and motivation that you got from this conference is really going to last? Well, see, I don't think it's hard to get motivated. I think it's hard to stay motivated. And unfortunately, most people can only stay motivated for about 48 hours. And what that means is that in the absence of any kind of reinforcement, a lot of you folks will lose the pumped up, motivated feeling you have right now if you do not do something to reinforce it. Most people lose their motivation on the way to the airport, unfortunately. Let me give you some common examples just to hammer home that point. I think an example of getting motivated but not staying motivated, perhaps the most common example of that by far would have to be the New Year's resolution. How many of you set New Year's resolutions earlier this year? Can I see by a show of hands? How many of you are keeping those resolutions here? Not very many. What's the most common New Year's resolution in America? 10 pounds, right? A lot of people wake up on January 1st, and they make a promise to themselves, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And then you ask them why, and they give you a big, long list of reasons. I'll tell you why I want to lose the weight. I'll look better, feel better, wear clothes I haven't been able to wear in years. I'd be so proud of myself. They're certainly not lacking in motivation. And yet, often you go back to that same person a couple days later, and they're sitting at their desk eating a cookie or a bag of chips and you make the comment, what about your diet? And their answer is, not today. See what's going on around here in this office? Not today, isn't that true? So what's going to keep you motivated to implement all the great information and knowledge you got from this conference? What I'd like to do in the short period of time that I have with you this afternoon is show you a few simple hands-on techniques that you can use to get and stay focused over long periods of time to get and stay motivated. And by far the most common technique I can share with you is to get goals on either a CD or on a tape. Let me ask, how many of you folks have your goals for the year 2008 on a tape or a CD anywhere? Can I see by a show of hands? I do not see any hands going up, so let me ask you a different question. How many of you folks have CD players or tape players in your cars, your SUVs, or your trucks? May I now see a show of hands? You all do. How many hours a week do you spend driving around in those vehicles? Well, figure it out. If it only takes you 20 minutes to get to work every day, and you're doing that five days a week, you're already clocking four and a half to five hours just getting to work and back. How difficult would it be to leave this conference and take the most salient information you got? I know you might have interacted with users at one of the functions and got a great idea. Jot that down on a piece of paper. I know you attended breakout sessions and heard some speakers that gave you some fantastic information. Take some of those points, some of those ideas, jot them down on a piece of paper. Make a list of what you think is the most valuable information you got from this conference. And then I recommend you do the following. Go to any Windows-based operating system. Get a microphone, plug that microphone into the mic jack. Windows is gonna call up a screen, pretty much says, what do you wanna do? One of the choices is going to be, burn or make a CD. Follow the prompts. 
and sit there and get all the information you learned from this conference, read it into that microphone over and over again until you create for yourself a five minute long CD. Burn a CD. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time telling you exactly how to do this. The prompts are quite self-explanatory, but if you've never burned a CD before or you don't know how to do it, ask any teenager and they will explain to you exactly how to do it. It is not a difficult process. It's a very simple process and it would not take you long to create one of these goal setting CDs for yourselves, but if you really want to keep the enthusiasm you got from this conference and if you really want to help users help users helping other users and if you really want to start implementing these ideas, I recommend strongly you get it down on tape or on a CD. Then I recommend you take that CD and put it in the glove compartment of your car and every day for the next couple of weeks, perhaps as you're driving to the office or maybe on the way home, just have that CD droning in the background for a few minutes each day reminding you of what you want to do and when you want to get it done. Hear your own voice repeatedly reminding you of your goals. You know, if you actually did that, it would only take you about a half hour to make the CD, probably a lot less than that. But if you actually played it every day for the next couple of weeks, at the end of that time, you would end up with the same net psycho psychological effect as television commercials. Let me explain. A lot of people say, I cannot be programmed, I cannot be conditioned, but the fact of the matter is, TV commercials do it to you on a rather regular basis. Let me give you some common examples. Here's a very old television commercial. Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette should. They took that commercial off the air 26 years ago. Here's a commercial they took it off the air quite a bit earlier than that. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. They took that commercial off the air 42 years ago. Now, for the younger people in the room looking around saying, I do not know what this guy is talking about, let me share with you some of the things they got you with. Please don't squeeze. Fly the friendly skies of. Now, did any of you try to learn those television commercials? Did you ever sit in front of a TV set and say, today is the day I'm going to learn the Charmin jingle? I doubt it. And yet here you are years and years later and you still know them by heart. How did that information get into your subconscious mind? How did those commercials become internalized? Well, it's passive repetition. You made no effort to learn the commercials. But if you drive to work every day and you're listening to a radio program and they start playing those radio commercials over and over again, it doesn't take long. You pick up every nuance, every song, every word, every note, and you do it unconsciously. And clearly it works, clearly it works, or advertisers would not be spending billions of dollars a year doing it to your brain. I say, do it to yourself. I say if you're going to get and stay motivated, you need some organized program to do that. Because writing your goals down once a year is not enough. Attending a conference for a few days and getting all pumped up is usually not enough. If you're truly gonna motivate yourself for the long term, you need to be on what I call a motivational program. And one such program is getting your goals down either on tape or CD and just have it droning in the background. Think of it. it takes you 15, 20 minutes to a half hour to make one of these CDs and then you don't even have to listen to the CD. Let me explain that bold statement. You do not have to pull your car off to the side of the road, stop driving and listen to what's on that CD. You are not listening or paying attention to those TV and radio commercials and you don't have to listen to the CD. Just have it droning in the background and you will pick it up unconsciously. What could be simpler? That's one thing you can do to stay focused. There are others. For example, I would like to share with you a second way of getting and staying focused on your goals that is really quite different but every bit as effective. I've been a professional speaker now for going on 28 years. I do anywhere from 70 to 100 talks each year. This is my fourth talk this week. I go all over the country, speak to all kinds of different groups in all kinds of different capacities, and I've been doing this now for quite a while. And the reason I mention that is that all the talks I give, all the conferences I speak at, bring me into direct contact with some very interesting people. 
Quite often, if I'm in a convention, I will see who wins the awards. Who gets called up on stage, perhaps, as the salesperson of the year, or the manager of the year, or the top producer of the year, or the high money makers. I, they often sit me at the head table with the CEO or the founder of a company. The movers and shakers. I get to meet people like that all the time. Well, a few years ago, I decided to put those contacts to good use. If I was introduced to a high achiever, I learned to ask a very simple question. What do you do to keep yourself motivated? I saw you won that sales award. I figured it didn't happen by accident. I'd be curious, what do you do to keep yourself fired up? And quite simply, I found the higher up the chain they, wore, they were, the longer they had been successful, the more motivated they were, the more likely they were to be hypnotizing themselves to be a success. I'm going to say that again because I know it's got to sound weird. I believe successful people literally hypnotize themselves into success. Typically, they do not call it hypnosis, but if you listen to these people, they use very common terminologies. They will often say things like, I started in this business 10 years ago, myself an assistant in one office. Today, I've got 100 offices and I employ over 1,000 people. When I first started, I did not have that much going for me, but you know what I had? I had a vision. I had a dream. I could see myself doing very well in this business. I used to drive around in kind of a beat-up old car because that's all I could afford, but I used to cut out pictures of Mercedes, tape them up on the dashboard, and kept telling myself, someday, someday. Well, see that big, beautiful car out in the driveway? Always knew I'd be driving a car like that. See that big, beautiful house? Always knew I'd be living that kind of lifestyle. They talk about the dream. They talk about the vision. They talk about being able to see themselves achieve their goals. That is a form of self-hypnosis. Please don't let the word scare you. I say that word, people tend to get nervous. Turns out hypnosis is a very common state of mind. In fact, I maintain the average person in this room right now is already spending about 70% of their waking day in a trance anyhow. And I'm not kidding, I wish I was. I believe you spend fully 70% of your waking day in a trance. You don't believe me? How many of you have ever driven right past your exit on a freeway? Can I see by a show of hands? You know, the sign from the ground to the top is 12 foot high. You drove past a 12 foot high sign. How do you manage to do that and be fully conscious? Have you ever pulled into your driveway at the end of the day, shut off your ignition, and seriously had to ask yourself, how did I get here? Was that light red when I went through it? Did I stop at that stop sign? Another classic example of hypnosis. How many times have you been in your office and look over and see one of your coworkers in a trance? <laughs> we go in and out of trances all the time. We just don't notice that we do it. And unfortunately, most of us waste that time. We waste it. We might daydream about a vacation we're going to take or some fantasy and we're having it on our mind, but we don't really use it. However, the high achievers have learned how to tap into that state. They use it. You've probably seen it. If any of you are involved with the insurance salespeople, the very successful ones, the heavy hitters, spend a lot of time in a trance. You walk into their office, they're staring out into space. You walk in the room, they don't even hear you. So you make a noise, you call their name, they snap out of it, and they say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry just trying to figure out how to put this deal together in my mind or how to get this underwritten. They get in that state of mind on a regular basis and instead of wasting it, they program themselves. I'll tell you what they're really doing. They're getting into their subconscious mind and they alter what we psychologists call your subconscious self-image. I know a lot of people use that term, but very few people think about it. People will say things like, oh, he or she is always going to be a success because they've got a good or a positive self-image, whereas he or she's always going to get themselves in trouble or whatever because they've got a bad or a negative self-image. You hear people talk about it, but have you ever really thought about it? For example, where is your self-image? What is your self-image? What do you think of yourself right now? Because believe it or not, there really is a little mental picture in the back of your mind, and it really does affect your performance. Let me explain to you what it is and show you how to find it. You can find what your subconscious self-image is by doing a very simple little test. Try to remember the last time you took a bath or a shower. Sounds like a strange thing to ask a group, doesn't it? <laughs> Do it. 
Try to remember the last time you were taking a bath or a shower. Now, for most, if not all of you, that was this morning. Try to remember that event. When you remember taking that bath or shower, didn't most of you just do this? When I asked you to remember that, didn't you unconsciously take your mind outside of your body? Isn't it sort of like you're out of yourself looking at yourself standing in that shower or sitting in that bathtub? It's kind of like you've removed your mind out of your body and there you are in that image. Kind of like to point something out. That is not the way it happened. That's not the way it happened. When you were taking the bath or the shower, you were seeing things from eye level. If you were remembering it the way it really happened, all you should be seeing right now are tiles on the wall or fixtures on the bathtub because that's the way the image was recorded, but it's not the way it's remembered. It's remembered with a little picture of you in there. Where'd you come from? You came right out of your subconscious mind, take a good look at that picture. That is what you think you look like in relation to the rest of the world around you. Turns out that picture has some pretty powerful implications. For example, if you just pulled out a picture of an overweight person, you're probably gonna have a weight problem until you change that picture. And I don't care what diet you get yourself on. You can get yourself on the world's greatest diet and drop 50 pounds, but if you still think of yourself as being an overweight person, you're gonna turn around and gain that weight, weight right back again. You say you want to run a successful agency. If you cannot see yourself running that agency smoothly and successfully, you're going to be having problems time after time, and many of those problems are going to be of your own making. The truly successful people tap into that image and mold it the way they want it. I do not believe it is an accident that we, that we call the truly successful people in our culture visionaries. The ability to get in there and alter that picture at will, that is self-hypnosis. And it's not scary. Now, I've spent a portion of my time talking about it. What I would like to do is spend the rest of my time with you folks this afternoon demonstrating it. You might be wondering what these chairs are doing up here. It's my intention in the next few moments to bring a few of you up out of the audience and literally hypnotize you. Before I do that, I have a couple promises to make. Here's promise number one. You do not have to come up here and do this if you don't want to. Every once in a while, find a really good subject in the audience, and naturally I'd love to have them up front here, but if you do not want to be hypnotized, if I come out into the audience and ask you to come up and you don't want to, simply give me a hand signal, I'll happily move on to someone else. You see, I don't want you up here unless you want to be up here. But if you do end up up here, here's promise number two. I promise you will not be humiliated. This is not going to be dancing with broomsticks or quacking like ducks or doing the strip tease. That is not what this is about. If you have never seen someone hypnotized up close and personal, fasten your seatbelts because you're about to see something that is truly fascinating. But everything I do carries with it a message. I'm going to do my best to explain to you exactly what it is you're seeing when these people come up here and get hypnotized and how what they are experiencing is so very similar to some of the things you experience in your personal as well as your business lives. There's a message here. No one will be humiliated is my second promise. My third and final promise, whoever does end up up here, I can pretty well promise at the end of the presentation you will be more relaxed than you have been in years. It's one of the side effects of the technique. I simply can't tell you how many people I've hypnotized. They